Okay, this is 10.2, infer properties of a polynomial function from its graph. I did previously record it, which is why it's already all written on. Um, but I wanted to go over it because the computer shut down, so, or not the computer, but the program shut down, so I have to re-record. So this, there's four parts to the problem. It's all based off of this graph here, okay? And so the first part asks for the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. It will only ask you one or the other, okay? For this particular problem, it asked me where the function was increasing. I just wanted you to be aware that it is possible that on different uh, versions of the problem that you get as you try to master it, some of them may say decreasing, okay? While others may say increasing. So make sure you pay special attention to which word they're using so you can identify the correct intervals. So what I did was I traced the graph from left to right and then I only um, colored over the parts in red that were actually increasing. So when I traced it, this is going downward, this is going upward, so this was increasing. This is going downward, going upward again, so this is increasing, going downward, and then going upward, so this part is increasing. Okay, so the red parts are the parts of the graph that are increasing. Now in order for me to get the intervals, they only want to know the x values that correspond to those starting and ending points of the um, red pieces. So this x coordinate corresponds to negative 4, and the end of this section corresponds to the x value negative 2. So the interval negative 4 to negative 2 should be selected. Now this section starts at the x coordinate of 2 and stops at the x coordinate of 6. So the interval 2, 6 should be selected. And then this section, the x value starts at 8. And because it's going to the right forever, the, y va the x value that it's eventually going to all the way to the right will be infinity. So then you also select 8 to infinity. Now part B says the function f has local minima at which x values. And I just want you to be careful because if they just say um, what is the local minima or what is the local maxima of f, if that's how they phrase the question, what is the local maxima or what is the local minima, then they're asking you for the y values, okay? But if they say, if they phrase the question as the function has local maxima at which x values, then you need to enter the x values where the peak values occur, depending on the problem. And it will go, it will toggle between the two. Some problems may ask you for the minima, some problems may ask you for the maxima, okay? Minimas are all the valleys in the graph. Maximas are all the peaks in the graphs. These are never ending and going upward, so these will not result in peaks, okay? These are the only two peaks I have and then I have three values, right? Two here on the side and then the one in the middle. So for mine, it asked me for the minima, okay? So I'm paying attention to these three values. Now it doesn't want the x, it doesn't want the y values. It specifically asked me for the x value. So the x value that corresponds to this value is negative four. The x value that corresponds to this value is two. And then the x value that corresponds to this value is 8. And so those are the three x values that I will give them for all three of my minima in the graph. Now, it also says, what is the sign of the leading coefficient? Now here, you really need to understand your end behavior and what they mean in order to um, do this problem. So there are four different kinds of end behavior, right? There's going upward, which is a positive x to the even. There's going downward, which is a negative x to the even. There's going down on the left, up on the right, which is a positive x to the odd. And then up on the left and down on the right, which is a negative x to the odd, okay? So we need to identify which one this is. You only need to look at the ends to figure out which one it is. Both of my ends are going up. So according to this chart, means I have a positive x to the even kind of graph. Well, what is that coefficient? It's positive. I don't need to know what number it is. I just need to know the sign. And so it is going to be a positive because it's a 
going up. Then it asks me which of the following is a possibility for the degree of F, choose all that apply. And my suggestion is, is first start off by counting the turning points, okay? And we're going to count the turning points, so your degree is going to be one plus the number of turning points you have. So how many turning points do I hit? I have one, two, three, four, five turning points in the whole graph, okay? So that if I add one, that means six. So six is the lowest degree that I could possibly have. However, whatever you decide is the lowest degree that you could possibly have using this, okay? And I'll write that note, lowest degree is one plus the number of turning points. You're going to add two to it. And why do you add two? because it is very much possible that the function, when it's all in factored form, and I set each factor to zero to get the x-intercepts, it's possible that one of those factors could have given me imaginary answers. And if it does give me imaginary answers, I can't graph that. So it wouldn't be shown on the graph that there were imaginary answers. So, the only way I could know whether or not, I would have to have more information, of course, in order to decide whether or not there were imaginary answers. But for here, it's just asking me, well, what is the possibilities, okay? So it is possible. Now, all the imaginary numbers are gonna come in pairs. Why? Because there's always a plus and a minus, okay? And that has to do with your quadratic formula, right? Your quadratic formula has a plus and a minus, which means it has two values. And so your imaginaries are always gonna come in pairs. So if you assume that there's imaginary going on here, this is what happens when there's no imaginary is involved. Your power is six, just based off of the turning points plus one. But if I take into consideration that I have one pair of imaginaries, then I would get eight. If I take into consideration that I have two pairs of imaginaries factors, then I would have 10. But 10 isn't an option here. So the only two things I will be selecting is six and eight, and that's it, okay? So keep in mind, let's say the graph wasn't like this. It was going downward forever, okay? Then there would be one, two, three, four turning points if it were going downward forever. Then my degree, the lowest degree I could possibly have would have been five. And then if I had one pair of imaginaries, I could also select seven. If I had two pairs of imaginaries, I could also select nine, okay? So you keep two and keep selecting all of those numbers. Don't subtract two, you can't go backwards. It has to be the turning points plus one is the lowest possible thing you'll select. And then from there, you keep adding two.